What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to another look at the EOS R5 and this time the R5C in depth. In this video we're going to look at shutter shock or the vibration caused by the mechanical shutter opening at the start of an exposure. Now normally this is the part where I'd also say something about this video applying to similar EOS R cameras, but this time that's actually not the case. So while the R5, R6, and R3 share the same or at least very similar shutter mechanisms, the camera's masses and resolutions are different, and as a result, so too would be the impact of that shutter's movement on the resulting image. Now that said, I do own an R5C, and I did the same set of tests as I did on the R5 with it. Now I didn't expect there to be much of a difference between the two cameras, and ultimately there wasn't. But the R5C does have an internal or a rigidly mounted sensor without the IBIS mechanism, and I wanted to see if that might make a difference as well. Now, I also wanted to see if the lens's mass had an effect on this whole thing, too. So in addition to testing the two bodies, I also tested with two lenses, an RF 100 to 500, which also has the effect of cantilevering the camera off of the tripod head, and a much lighter EF 50 millimeter F 1.8 on an RF mount adapter. Now, of course, none of this makes any difference if the camera's image stabilization system is compensating for vibrations as you're going to shoot. So for all of these tests, image stabilization was disabled. Now, holding all of this up was a Gitzo GT3530 LS tripod with a Really Right Stuff BH55 ball head. Now, I do realize that this is pretty beefy, but it's my go-to tripod for any kind of serious photography, and I think in terms of overall stability, it should be fairly representative of what other serious photographers would be using. Now that said, I did conduct a set of tests using a much lighter carbon fiber trial trout travel tripod, that's a mouthful, and I saw identical results to what I did on the Gitzo. Now this brings me to the test target itself. For this whole test, I used the long exposure light on black approach, specifically a black base image with pixel aligned uh, or a pixel aligned pattern in white. This approach mitigates some of the problems of using a short blur being washed out when using a standard reflective resolution target. So for all these tests, I could use a long exposure and the light blur or the any motion from vibration would show up as a trail. And in essence, you can think of this as basically light painting with a test target instead of a flashlight. The black background of the target doesn't contribute to the exposure and can't remove light that's already been recorded. And any motion, as I said, would show up as a light trail in the image. Now for the target itself, I used an image displayed at one-to-one -one magnification on my laptop screen. Each pixel is is tiny, so it becomes essentially a point source, so I could keep the working distance reasonable. In fact, it was small enough to test on a desk, basically, and the res resulting spots that the light or the target produced covered only a handful of the sensor's pixels, so it was easy to interpret whether there or not there was motion. Now, additionally, the brightness of the display on the laptop was kept such that the light trails would be seen if the camera moved during the exposure. I mean, obviously you could have it so dim that you only got spots and you couldn't see the movement. I checked this, as you see, can see in this image here, shot handheld before I started all of this test. Now, each test consists of two one-second exposures made at f7.1 and ISO 100. I chose to use f7.1 because it's the R5's diffraction-limited aperture, and as a result, should give the sharpest image from any given lens. Now, to isolate the shutter mechanism from other vibration sources, I used both a remote release and the camera's two-second timer for each of these exposures. Finally, to keep things from being influenced by noise and therefore sharpening algorithms, I disabled sharpening and luminance noise reduction in post-processing. So let's take a look at the images. So to start with, these are the eight test images from the R5, and these are displayed at one-to-one -one scaling for 1080p video. Now looking at them at this level, I can't see any noticeable difference between the two sets of images. And remember, we're comparing the electronic shutter, which should have no shutter shock vibration, to the mechanical shutter, which potentially could because something is moving. 
Now the top series of these images is from the 100 to 500 and the bottom series is from the 50 f 1.8. The left two columns are, were shot with the mechanical shutter and the right two columns were shot with the electronic first curtain shutter. I also repeated, as I said, the tests with the R5C, and this is the same set of tests, but this time from the R5C instead. Now, after looking at this series of tests, I was decided that I was more than happy to stop at this point. As a photographer, my stock and trade is pictures, not pixels, and there's just not enough of a difference in these images to warrant me spending much more of my time on this. Now, a big part of the reason I ended up looking at this was a few comments on my R5 shutter mode video that claimed that the R5 shutter mechanical shutter had significant shutter shock. And my assumption going into these tests was that given those claims, I would expect to see at least some differences in the sample images. So is this ultimately conclusive? Does this tell the whole story? Does the R5 have no shutter shock using the mechanical shutter? Well, in these tests, I, my main goal was to isolate the shutter as the only variable. After all, if we're worried about the shutter causing vibration, it doesn't help us at all if we're also holding the camera in one hand while dangling from a precipice in gale force winds to take our test images. The outside variables just overwhelm anything that is reasonable from the shutter. Now that said, I think there are also certainly some limitations in what was done here as well. For example, I only tested with two lenses, and while they covered the extremes of light and heavy lenses that I own, they don't com cover the complete range of what Canon makes. Moreover, it's entirely possible that there could be some combination of lenses that match a resonant frequency for the camera, and that in turn just causes issues that I wouldn't see with the lenses that I used. Now, all of that said, the short of it seems to be that you don't have to worry about shutter shock from the R5's shutter mechanism. At least, that's been both my real-world experience, now admittedly I don't shoot an awful lot with the mechanical shutter, and what I saw in these tests. If I see blur or vibration in my images, I'm going to look at every other factor that I can consider before I even attempt to blame it on the mechanical shutter. Now, all of that said, I still recommend using the electronic first curtain shutter as your primary shutter on the camera. The only exception to this recommendation is if you are in that rare instance where you see bokeh rendering issues at the edges of the frame with very fast apertures, so at f1.2 or so, and when shooting at very high shutter speeds, so above a thousandth of a second or more. Other than that, the electronic first curtain shutter gives you flash, faster flash sync speeds, higher continuous frame rates when in continuous drive modes, less audible noise, and it reduces the shutter wear since it doesn't have to cycle the shutter as many times per picture, which means you should get more pictures before your shutter potentially could fail. So that's shutter shock on the R5 in a nutshell as I've been able to test it. Now, of course, if you've had firsthand issues with shutter shock on your R5, I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments below. Now, if you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Finally, if you know someone who might also find this useful, please share it with them. It helps them, it helps me, and it makes you look like a hero in the process. Best of all, it's free, so it's a win all the way around. And there's not much in life left that's free. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.